begin again. In order to continue to unfold this year, next year and beyond that, that is literally what you need to do. Unfold your thought in that same way that you would neatly unfold a napkin. Unfold your thoughts. Unfold your beliefs that anyone has told you about this time. It does not mean you need to toss them aside. Let them cover your lap. Let them catch any of the crumbs that fall. And then, when you are quite ready, stand and very gracefully embrace your life. Embrace the year. Let the year unfold for you gracefully. Because if you do not, you will find yourself in that same little trap that you see many around you falling into now. The trap of what it is supposed to look like and feel like and sound like by now. The trap of what this year is supposed to look like or what is supposed to happen now so that what is supposed to happen in 2011 will happen so that what is supposed to happen in 2012 will happen. And if you get caught in that trap, it is a little bit harder to climb out of it. So it is better not to fall into it at all. And the way to do that is simply to go about observing life and go about observing what others are doing and what they are saying and how they are being and don't get stuck in it. Don't get mire in it. Don't put your feet in it so that you cannot get them out again. Observe, observe, observe. And as you observe, you will find a place, a stride, a step that feels comfortable for you, a direction that feels comfortable for you, not compromised. Not where you compromise based upon what another tells you. You ought to be by now, how you ought to live, what you ought to know by now. You will find a stride to your step that allows you to be who and how you are. As you do this, you will know more, you will discover more than you could have imagined any other way. It does not mean that you are not to pay attention to what is said or what has been prophesied or what has been written. But can anyone truly write your life? Would you allow them to? Would you truly allow them to say, and this is how you will be for the rest of this year and all of next year? Or this is what will happen to you, plan ahead of it or plan behind it? And so we will explore this subject to your liking in all of the ways that you prefer. And then you will go about and observe and live and change and be and do and make of this world all of those things that make it your world, your time and your life. Is it my body, this earth? Yes. But I will tell you that this year is not very different than next year for Gaia, not for the Earth. And the year that follows it is not very different than the other. But over time, over great time, then yes, with great flow and great creativity and great awareness, the Earth makes and remakes itself and invites species and kingdoms and experiences and all else that can be. But not because one year is so very much more important or distinct than the other. Now, your lives upon the earth are more temporary. You have a designated number of years that you will choose to place a body upon the earth. A number of years in which it is purposeful, exciting and interesting to share yourself with the world and with everything that is upon it. And that is understood.
Based upon that, this year, the balance of 2010 will still be rather uneventful in many ways. It is a year in which you will come to know yourself better. It is a year in which you will have greater understanding of those things that you have already studied. So if there are subjects that are of particular interest to you that you have been learning for yourself, teaching for yourself, or even teaching others, you will continue that route. But it will feel a little bit different. You will have a deeper understanding of a deeper truth. At the same time, if there is a yearning within you to be or to do something else, that yearning will grow within you. It will deepen as if you can truly feel it in a womb of sorts, as if there is something growing within you that somehow wants to be birthed into the world. And this yearning will feel just like that. In some ways it will feel very ancient, as if something from long ago is somehow very present again. As if something that you had forgotten a long time ago, now it has been revealed to you. And at the same time, you will feel a little bit stuck, as if you can't do anything with it yet. Not yet. It is here. Now I have recognized it. The yearning is still there. Why cannot I do something with it? And here I tell you, that is why I say, step. Find your stride. Find your next step. Find your next truth and let it be for a little bit longer until you truly feel that it is time to bring it into physical manifestation. Find the true timing. There is a tempo to it. Find the tempo to life. Find the stride. Find the next step. Then you will bring this forward and it will be as if you have timed it correctly with the market, with your adventure, with your thoughts. And if you do it this way, you will find that you will second guess yourself much less. You will simply say, of course, it was its time. It had been in the making all of this time. It will somehow just know that it is time. Or someone will tap you on the shoulder and say, remember that thing, that idea that you had a time ago? What did you ever do with that? And that will be your key, that it is coming forward again. But do not hurry it. Do not rush these moments. There is indeed a timing associated with that. And just as the earth is flowing and flowing and flowing in its different aspects, you are as well. You are a part of the earth. You are not simply upon the earth. You cannot subtract yourself from that process. And all things have their due time and their due place. That all being said, as these parts of you will come forward in the next year, in the early stages of the 2011, you will come to recognize yourselves in a deeper way, in a greater way, and you will say, something has changed. I am not the same being that I was last year. Something has changed. The earth has changed. The world has changed. Somehow it receives me now. Somehow it recognizes me now. It will almost seem as if the earth that had not truly seen you now sees you and almost puts a little small pedestal for you to stand upon because you will feel that you are standing just a little bit taller than others. Earlier we said that, that you are walking about 8 or 12 inches above the ground and the next year in the 2011 you will feel that way. You will literally feel just a little bit taller than others as if you can see just above their head which will allow you just a little bit more vision to see a little bit further than the average person can see. Again, that is why I tell you, do not shape your thoughts by what others will say to you. Because if you do, even if you are able to see above the shoulders or above the head of another, you will have a notion of what would lie ahead there of what would be off to the horizon there and you would not see something very important that is there for you to see. There is a point for each one that you are to walk toward because there is where your truth is or if you like you may call it your reward or you may call it your purpose, your aim. So you wish to have an aim that is straight and true. 
because you have already had the years and the time to wander about and to go this way and to take the scenic route and to come back and ponder it for a little time longer and think about it and take a rest and then take another route in which you may consider it and now truly is coming that time where all that you are begins to come together to coalesce into a being into a truth into a key of knowledge it'll be as if you have found the key of life your key your note as if somehow both earth and heaven are sounding your note but if you are paying attention to someone else's or what it would look like or sound like or particularly particularly those that will pick next year as the year to offer to you to serve to you a platter filled with fear then it will be more difficult for you to recognize that note your own note and that is what next year will bring as well he will come a very beautiful serving platter a little fear for you a little fear just just a morsel an appetizer would you like an appetizer i'll be back later with the main course a little fear a little fear are you sure and you will see oh but they look so tempting look how pretty the little appetizers are there's just a little morsel after all i'll just peek and see what it says just like all of you do when you see the little books that advertise your horoscope just a little peek I don't want to buy the book. I just want to see what it says about my day. <laughs> and so it will be that way with the peddlers of fear. And they are very good at it. Now, not all of those that bring about the fear do so for that reason. I will tell you that just as you have come to discover your truths to bring them forward in such a way that they are honorable that they are gentle that they will reveal themselves and remember that earlier we also spoke that there are those that did not get it quite right last time or the time before that well in order to get it right this time they do not want to leave any stone unturned and so at any little breath careful you don't want to go near that careful that will hurt you that will bite you that will fail careful and so there will be the warning signs so there are those that pedal the fear those you may stay away from and there are those that come with all of the warnings warning for this caution for the other don't drink the water don't eat the food don't breathe the air don't look in there don't believe that just in case better not this and better not that well what will you do all day then so you must decide for yourself then what is true what is real and what is to be realized an interesting year next year filled with all manner of illusions and realities sometimes you may want the illusion most of the time you think you want that which is real sometimes the imitation will do in this next year the imitation will look better the illusion will look better than the reality and because you will convince yourself well we all make our own reality anyway don't we and so if i choose the illusion and i make that my reality then it's real you will see how easily you will convince yourself of many different facts you will call them facts you will call them truths but in essence they will be beliefs disguised in illusions they will confuse you and so you will need to keep your wits about you next year your wit your wit and your will not a great deal of courage yet but you will need to truly be discerning who am i what am i what is my part in this that you may ask yourself what part do i wish to have in this if at all whenever possible next year take a moment a moment not of hesitation 
a moment of truth, a moment out of time, or a moment in which you can step back from the illusion and observe it. Pace yourself to it. Is there a part for me in this? Is it an invitation? Is it a demand? What part do I wish to play in this? Take a moment to note and notice yourself. It will serve you greatly. If possible, remind others to do the same. And it is not the same as to hesitate or not take a chance at life. It is to take a chance but in full knowing of what you are and of what there is to gain or expand in that moment, in that moment of truth. There will be many little scares next year, as we have said with the fears and the warnings. Look, if we are not careful, we will go to war with this country or with the other. Look, this has been put forward which will surely lead to this next thing and this next thing. And so your mind will automatically lead or jump to conclusions. Do not jump, or at least look before you leap, as they say. But it will be that kind of year, a year with a great many headlines, and a year of struggle, push-pull, push-pull. You are already seeing that now, but it will be more than that. It will stretch within the boundaries of what you would call normal, or what you would term decent. Those that butt heads will continue to do so, and they will find others to stand behind. They will take jabs at each other, but she will do it. I will stand here, and she will take a jab at this one, and a jab. I didn't do anything. I was just standing here, minding my own business. And so those that know how to hide behind others or stand apart from them will surely do that. And so you will need to look who is the puppet master. Who is the instigator? What is behind the behind the behind the scenes? That is another reason to stand apart from the illusion. In some instances, you will not be able to stand apart from it because so much of culture and society and country and government will have already stepped in it that you being part of that will be forced into the mire as well. And so in that case, you must step as lightly as possible, <coughs> extricate yourself from it at the sooner opportunities, and recognize while that is me, that's not me. While I am a part of this, the choice that I have does not truly make this choice. Therefore, to the degree that I can, I will remove myself from this process. That is not the same as closing your eyes to it and pretending it is not there. It will be very difficult to do that next year. You will be able to, however, to the degree that you can, choose it or do not choose it, change it, attempt to change it, or stand apart from it. Remember that I have said to you earlier, and next year you will see this more than at other times, you will see that there is truly a separation within humanity. As if there is a tear in the field or in what makes humanity humanity. So that there is this kind and that kind. As if all of a sudden there are only those that think with their left brain, or only those that think with their right brain, or only those who have a mind for something and those that have a heart for something else. So it will be a year that will seem to oppose each other, except that that opposition is an illusion. Because if something opposes each other and pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls apart, eventually it must find that it must come together in some way. And of course, there are those that will come together gracefully, and there are those that will come together with less than grace. And so you will do what you can. In terms of the earth, you can expect for there to be more and continued earth changes. You can expect one or two more earthquakes this year. You can expect four of the grander earthquakes next year that also will give rise to volcanic movement in both the northern Americas, in both the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere as well.
You can expect a certain movement of the tides and the oceans themselves as well that will tug and pull on the earth and you will feel the beginning movements of island nations that take to the earth changes in fairly poor ways. And of course, being that they are island nations, they will not have the riches of other countries to draw upon and so what they would consider a catastrophe can come to be. In terms of catastrophes, you can also expect a fair amount of economic catastrophes throughout the world as well. In expected places and in less than expected places as well. You can expect those that hold monies to lose monies. Where did it go? We don't know. It's gone. Who took it? Who were they? We don't know. How did it happen? We don't know. And literally, they will not know. They will not know because money itself has no value other than the value that it is given. And if that value that is given is taken away or falls away, then there is no value. Where did it go? It didn't go anywhere because it was never here other than by agreement. And so many of these agreements that have been between islands, between governments, between corporations, the agreements will not be so strong. Once the assets fall away, so will the promises. And then there will be the contracts. And the contracts are also not worth much more than what they have been printed or the monies that have secured them. And so there will be a great deal of exchanging of energies. I'll trade you with this for that. I'll trade you this resource for another resource. I will trade you this company for another company. Literally as if they were shuffling cards. And so where is the value in that? You will need to find the value of life, the purpose of life, and to continue to move forward regardless of how the game of charades is played by others. It is not to say that it is a complete meltdown of sorts. A lot of it will melt its way up. And little corridors will be surprisingly interesting. Little investment corridors, little invention corridors. There will be many little places of assets that truly have a ray of hope. New resources to be discovered and new ways to use them. Those that will be able to truly benefit humanity will be the ones that hold the most promise. And of course, there will be the usuals worth of new gadgets that will infiltrate almost every country. All the ones that will fill the minds with mindfulness. And those that are not mindful, well, mindless, is almost good enough too. So it is a year to discover. There will be many, many more that are finding their way into the personal discovery arena, or what you would term it. All of a sudden, all of the little eggs and bubbles will pop, and out will come all of the little heads looking for who they are. All of a sudden, all of the little hearts will pop open, and those that previously did not know that they had a heart or passion for something will feel very passionate about things, particularly about me. I will have many, many more fans on Facebook next year. <laughs> because so many more hearts and minds will open and say, what about the earth? What about the earth? And first they will think, what about me? And so the who am I questions. What am I? Why am I? Why do I matter? Why does it matter? Some of these will be born out of personal tragedies. Some of these will simply be born. All of those that have been sleeping and slumbering and sleeping and slumbering, well, they will have a few nightmares or dreams and then they will waken. And who will they turn to? Who will they turn to? 
And so as they are looking for who to turn to, well, can you imagine, that is a very great market that is about to be born. They are not simply individuals popping open and hoping to discover themselves. They will open in such great numbers, so many at once, that it is as if a new retail market were opening to the world. Well, who would not wish to seize on that opportunity? And so all that can, will. For instance, you will see that the religions, once again, will come to the forefront and battle for the new souls. I'll take that one and that one. I'll take her. You can have him. And I'll take this one and that one. You can have that market. I'll take this territory. You take the other. Literally, it will be as if they are divvying up the world. The religions, once again, struggling and fighting for each other, for themselves, and to draw attendance to themselves. And because the world, in some ways, will continue to be a little bit more chaotic than it is now, well, who else is going to fix it? If you can't fix it and you can't fix it, well, it's about time God did something about this. <coughs> And of course, he's on our side, not your side. <laughs> and so, in that same pie that you are divvying up into three, the religions also will come forward and wish to divvy it up in their own way. And so they will also have great marketing campaigns. God lives here. Come visit. <laughs> Free snacks for the kids. <laughs> yes it is with humor but you will see that it is also with truth because they are also hungry for your vote they are hungry to draw back in now some of the religions will do very well they have been planning for this they have been studying your tendencies, studying what you are reading. They read all of the same material that you read, you know, but for their own purposes. And so they know what those that are popping and waking, they know just what they want to hear and to know. And so they are already preparing their campaigns and they are very sophisticated campaigns. And they will be put forward, their marketing approaches, in very grand ways. And it will indeed appear to them, and to those that seek it, that God is on their side. Everyone wants to be on a winning team. And so those that join one side or one faction or one truth above another, that is why they will be joining it. Because this, when it's all said and done, this is where God will come to rest. And I want to live in God's house. So that is the direction that they will take. In these movements of energies, not all will fare well. Just as you have seen in political campaigns where one is quite capable of smearing another, well, the religions will smear one another as well. They will have just the right ammunition, spiritual ammunition, to hurl at one another at just the right time. So it will sway the vote of humanity this way or that way. Well, the smaller ones, the smaller little factions that do not wish to get left behind, they will begin to merge together and to accumulate one to the next, one to the next, joining together until they become large enough to then launch a campaign for or against the other. They will follow certain economic models that have been proven over time, particularly those employed by certain of the larger corporations in the world. So that you will see that church entities, religious entities, begin to behave very much like corporate entities do as well. And there will even be certain corporations that now that it is time 
they will adopt these principles, they will be called. Certainly, officially, they would not wish to be affiliated with one religion over another, but unofficially, they will say, well, we do uphold these principles. We will adopt these principles, and we do so only to make them available to our employees. And since they have worked so well for our employees, they will also work for your household. And so the corporations as you know them now will literally begin to merge with certain religious entities and make their way out into the mainstream, the supermarkets. You can pick up a box of religion along with your box of detergent, if you like, just on the aisle next over. These essences will confuse many. They will not know what to believe. Whose team do I root for? Is there really more than one God? It is fine that there is more than one religion, but is there really more than one God? And if so, where does he live? That confusion will move out into society, out into culture. And in some ways it will unify certain families, it will confuse others, and it will bring about an air of uncertainty. Of course there will be many that have popped their little popcorn heads and continue to be undecided. And they are the ones that truly need most assistance because they are the ones that can be easily swayed one way or another. Out of the positive of being swayed is that one can be swayed toward the light, as you might say, or toward the higher principles or the greater truths or the independent notions. But there are those that can simply be swayed to almost anything or called to almost any action. And they will more than likely move in the direction of those that peddle the fear. And those that peddle the fear will attract those and they will give you what to fear. Because as much as you can say to yourself, it is an illusion, it is an illusion, it is an illusion, it is an illusion, except that it is on the six o'clock news and it was a catastrophe. And so it is important that you guard as well against a sadness. If there is one caution that I will give to you, it is that. There is a cosmic sadness that like a disease can be rampant in humanity. It is contagious. It is more contagious than fear. It is a sadness for what is. It is a sadness for what you see about you. It is a sadness for those things that do not seem as if they have a fix or a change or a way to heal them. There is a sadness to those things that appear somewhat impossible in their nature. And when the human mind, exciting as it is, exhilarating as it is, creative as it is, cannot think of a creative solution, not today, not tomorrow, not the next day, nor the one after that. It must be careful that it does not fall into an abyss of sadness. And how do you prevent that then? How do you avoid that? For you cannot simply paste a smile upon your face, pretend that you do not see, the problems that plague the human world that you live in and decide that you simply will never be sad because Gaia has said don't fall into that. And so in essence that is when all of the truths that we have spoken of, that fountainhead, that spiritual dimension does not know sadness. It understands that it exists, but it does not know it. It does not live it, because it lives in a greater truth, in a greater reality. It does not ignore it. 
it sees it. It understands it. It is part of the human condition. And so see, recognize, uplift the human condition when you can, but do not fall into its an abyss. It is like quicksand. It will hold you. And the more that you struggle against it, the more that it will cling to you. In the same way that one that is drowning clings to you and says, save me while you are both drowning, it is like that. And so that is the time that with great vision you continue to see above the heads of others and to follow a beacon of light that you have always recognized, that you have always held to, that has always uplifted you. And where you can, you will direct others to it as well. And you will continue to do that. Now that I have begun the subject for you, introduced it for you, shaken the ground beneath your feet just a little bit, now I will answer your questions relative to this time, if you like. I haven't quite formulated the question here, but it has to do with spirituality, truths, social activism, and politics. It's kind of this little whirlpool that I keep seeing in my head. And that in these times of change and potential fear and turmoil, there often becomes a person or persons who stand up and speak truth in such a manner that um, some people are assisted by that and I am having difficulty in my head meshing those elements together into any kind of formulation so that I might be one of those voices. You can be one of those voices. In order to be one of those voices, it must contain enough truth, enough universal truth for many. Okay. For many, and you must speak loud enough to be heard. That is dif difficulty for many who right. are destined to be leaders. Because in essence, spirit says to you, well, a great truth can be whispered. Mm -hmm. And those that are destined to hear it will hear even a whisper. And for those that do not wish to hear truth, even if you will shout it from the rooftops, they cannot hear it. That is a truth. However, that is true for you, and for you, and for you, because you listen right. for the whispers. And you will be silent long enough to hear the whisper and to take it in right. and recognize it as truth. But most others are not. It must be shouted again and again and again and reinforced and put before them again and again because they do not hear truth that easily. They do not recognize it or they cannot tell this truth apart from that one. This may be a much greater truth, but this one still contains some truth. Mm -hmm. And this one's on sale. <laughs> Truly, yes. it yes. is that mentality. Okay. This is better, better quality. Yes, go for the quality. But this one's on sale. Yes. See? Okay. And so this same truth that you've become accustomed to in some ways, mm -hmm. that is the rule of thumb now. Mm -hmm. And so it will need to be a truth that applies. It does not need to be a truly grand truth because you wish to appeal to those that want it on sale as well. Okay. So a simple truth may hold as much power as a grand truth during these times. Yes. Okay. But how long can you hold that truth? Or how long can you hold those hungry minds or mouths captive with that truth? Then you have Shall to I give you an to example? That. Please. Yes, we can. Does that sound familiar? Yes, we can. Can yes. what? Yes, and for how long? That is a truth that has been put forward, a mm -hmm. slogan that has been heard world round. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. 
But the world has gotten tired of that one already, and yeah. it is already looking for the next one. Okay. And that was a very grand truth, a world-captivating truth. But it was already a little bit old. Okay. And what else? It was also a little bit less than truth. It was true enough to captivate the ones that wanted, wanted it on sale. It is not true enough to hold those that want quality. Right. Okay. So these are what to pay attention to for those that wish to be a part of the leadership. The other thing is that you must make certain that those that you call to want leadership. Do they want to be led? Good most point. do. And most need to be led. The long ago example, the biblical example of the sheep and the sheep herder. Because they wish to be led. But there must be leadership to lead those who wish to be led. So do you have recommendations for What's the word I'm looking for? Proper is not it. Um, leadership that is in alignment for with higher uh, service. Yes. Could you share some of those recommendations with us? Not at all, for I am not in human embodiment. Okay. And that is for humanity to bring forward. All right. I will tell you that it lies somewhere between the prophet and the propaganda. Somewhere between those two extremes lies true leadership. Gotcha. Now these important times, important years for humanity, that is what to bring forward in yourself and in others. Mm -hmm. The spirit of leadership. You cannot name it in essence because it does not truly have a name. Okay. And the moment you name it, you limit it. Right. You make it small and you make yourself smaller for looking for it. Right. At the same time, you must find it or you cannot give it a voice. And so we may discuss it and we may bring it forward and we may <laughs> coax it from you. Yeah. And eventually it will have a name, a title, a form, a formula. The usual conundrum. Yes, but it will come forward to you and to others when it is important enough. Right. It will come forward. When you need to pull someone out of the quicksand, mm -hmm. that is when it will occur to you. Okay. Until then, it may not. Right. Until then, others may not want it. And it's because we listen to the whispers that we will know what to say when the other is in the quicksand. Yes. Okay. And when the whisper says, shout it out, do not say then, no, it must be a whisper. Because although you may must listen to the whisper, it may be you that must shout so that others will hear. Thank you. Indeed. Can I ask? In this uh, time of awakening, how much of it uh, is coming from leaders and from all walks of life, whether political or religious or teachers or any kind of, and how much from the grassroots of people just waking up individually, either by their actions or their words or even by just the energy they hold, how much of the awakening is more kind of like individual connecting, almost synchronizing with each other, and how much of it is leadership? Yes, understood. In this year, in the 2010 year, you will see very little true leadership. In the next year, in the 2011, you will see almost too many leaders. As if each one wants to throw their hat into the ring. I'm a leader. I have something to say. I have led this. I have done the other. I have brought this. I have made a profitable this. Particularly those that are profitable at this time, where most of the world does not think of itself as profitable now, those that have made a profit, those that have made money in uncertain economic times, they will more than likely throw their hat into the ring, whether it is the ring of leadership or the political ring. 
As you have seen, the world tires now of those that have been in politics and in government. And so it looks for new leadership. And so it will look for those outside of those ties. And because the world now struggles with its own poverty, with its own fears about poverty, it will search for those that have made of themselves a name or a place. And so those that show themselves capable of restoring a country or a company or an attitude, those that are turning the tide or able to turn this around, they will be the ones that will be considered leaders even if they have no leadership ability. Imagine that you are to go here and find one that has done well at the roulette table and call them a leader. Look, they have done exceptionally well last night, better than anyone else that was here. Let's elect them. It will be like that. Not much different perhaps in a different arena, perhaps a different amount, with a different name or a different headline, but about like that. And so next year, all will be coming, all the hats in the ring, and what are you to do with that? And when I say all the hats in the ring, using that particular phrase, you can imagine that they will come ready for battle that they will come ready to do the worst. They are coming to meet an opponent or several opponent. And so they will not be coming necessarily to uplift the world yet. In the year that follows that, in the 2012 year, that is the year of the grassroots, as you have called it. That is the year when comes openings, minds that are open, hearts that are open, and there will be a good amount of fear as well. For after all, it is the year of the predictions. It is the year of prophecy. It is the birth of that. And so there will be those that come to dispel all of that. And there will be those that come to promote and to lift it and to incite. And from between that and the parting of that will be the birth of true leadership. And you will recognize them. Because just as you, they will not take sides. They will not oppose, and they may not necessarily lead, but others will call upon them to lead. Others will follow them. Why? Why will they follow if they are not leading, and if they are not even having much to say? Something recognized there. And there will be many, not one. There will be many of this light, of this consciousness, of this awareness. And there will be many that imitate it as well. So it will be a confusing, confounding year, but it is the birth of true consciousness upon the earth and those that can carry it further than now. Those that carry it now, and there are a great many that carry it, but they carry it in a race, and they go around and around the circuit a few times and then pass the baton to the next one to carry it another few cycles, another few laps. And then they pass the baton to the next one to take it further or a little bit faster. The torch, to take the torch. But that also does not make them leaders. It makes them noticeable. You do not follow the one that is carrying the torch. Follow the torch. Follow the light. Wherever that is going, follow that. But the one that is carrying it, you know that they will pass it on to another sooner or later. They will tire. Or they will become bored. They will turn it over to another. Here, I've carried it long enough. Your turn. It's not going anywhere anyway. We're only going around and around in laps until the true leader says, why are we going around in circles when we can go up to the top of the mountain and light the way for all? But that true leadership comes when the world says it wants leadership. When the world says there can be many among us to lead. When the world says, as she does, I too am a leader. I do not know what the message is, but I feel within me a desire to offer it. That is leadership. Until then, there is much to observe, as we said earlier. Go around the circuit again and again. Observe. Observe. But careful of the quicksand. Recess? Very 
بعض <تصفيق>